Hey there, I'm Zach, and today we're going to be guiding you through how to install a ProLAM PLX portal. Your pack should have arrived including two portal columns, a PLX20 lintel, connection hardware, and an installation guide. Refer to this guide for a full list of components required, and so you can follow us along. Firstly, you'll need to determine the inside dimensions of the portal. To calculate the length to trim the lintel to, take 10 mils off the opening width. This is to allow for the L brackets and the knee connection. The lintel must be trimmed evenly from each end. Please note, the steel in the lintel must be a minimum of 150 mils from the end of the lintel. Now we need to trim both columns to the opening height, plus 280 mils, allowing for the lintel and footplate. Now we will use the footplate as a pattern guide to cut the angle shape for the footplate. Trim the end without the rebate. Shave off a little material on the bottom two corners to ensure a good footplate fit. Screw the footplates onto each column installing the bottom four HBSP 100mm screws first, then the rest into the angled side plates. Make sure the slots in the bottom of the footplate will face outwards away from the slab when it is stood up. Next we construct the portal on the ground, laying together the components. Please refer to the assembly diagram on page 3. Lay the columns and lintel loosely in place on the ground. Then we nail the L brackets to the unrebated side of each column. Insert bottom dovetail rod into each column. Then sit lintel into place on L brackets and add the top dovetail rods. Use a hammer to ensure a snug fit and add the four VGS 160mm screws. Slide the curved end plates over the end of the rods. Make sure the curve faces outwards. Then add the conical washers where the cone is pointing outwards. Trim the rods to fit within the portal width. Tighten the nuts until both curved end plate and conical washers are flattened against the column, or to 50 Nm of torque. Now the portal is assembled on the ground, we will lift it into place. With the help of two or more, the timber portal can be easily lifted into place. Now we need to install the foundation connection. Using your install guide, determine which connection you require for the foundation of your job. Using the appendix, find the appropriate construction details for your portal. In the case of a concrete foundation, ensure the footplate is correctly facing the slab edge, with the slots facing out. This tab allows the drill bit to be guided in on the correct angle into the slab. Use the tab as a guide, drill 12mm by 200mm deep into the concrete foundation and clean out any dust. Next, install the M12 200mm anchor screw bolts according to the manufacturer's instruction. You can also use an epoxy anchor rod here if preferred. Alternatively, here we have a timber subfloor, so this requires a different connection. Referring to the construction detail in the appendix, install the four M12 600mm anchor rods into the subfloor, securing them using the square washers and M12 nuts. Then when you lift the portal into place, simply slide onto the anchor bolts and tighten down. Finally, square up the portal, then add the four VGZ 200mm uplift screws into the L bracket at 45 degrees. And we're done, with installation taking no time at all. As this is a constantly developing product, we value your feedback. Please feel free to leave a comment or flick us an email. Thank you, and all the best with your install.